have the Soul Stealer, but he needs that gold, he needs to build some AP. Currently, he just has the uh, needlessly large rod and an amplifying tome, and that's 151 AP uh, Carthus up against the 337 AP Cow. That is just, yeah. Fnatic are now taking Baron, there's nothing that... Uh, Oh, they're not taking wow. Baron. Oh, actually, they caught Twisted Fate trying to protect Baron. Wow, Twisted Fate is out of that combat. Look at that. Bursting him down, even though he was running to 500 out of uh, 1,500 HP. And that should actually be a safe Baron for Fnatic right now. They're choosing not to go for it. They're trying to catch someone, on, and they are catching Amumu. He flashes out. Will he get away? There's a slow wall from Carpet. But Amumu is actually going in, triggering his ultimate. But there's just not enough damage out of there. Then Twisted Fate is coming wow. back in with his ultimate from behind. He is getting forced down. Corky is gonna take him down in no time. Fnatic XP goes down. Uh, Karthus goes down to a Ice Blast. Uh, Corky actually in the AoE there from uh, Karthus also goes down. Shushay has enough health and cleans up the team. And that's an ace against Pacific from Fnatic. There are three surviving members of Fnatic. They could probably do a Freeman Baron or they could take the advantage and just push a couple of lanes. Amazing team fight there, a little bit messy. They got drawn apart too much, and I question somewhat if that Amumu should have gone in before his team was in a position to, to do damage. But, yeah. Yeah, that's one of those things. They were caught very off guard. TF was just backing because he took a lot of damage as he was the first one there at Baron. And then they still considered the fight as they all had to get back in there. Garen was not able to do his spin to win inside that Amumu all, so it didn't really give him that much damage. You could see Garen at the end of the fight, before he went down, tried to bring him back into the wake of Karthus. Just wasn't enough damage to take him down. And they, uh, they did a very good job of focusing in that fight. We were able to take down four of the members of the team. And Fnatic really now uh, has this match in their favor a little bit of a power play to them as 36,000 to 27,000 gold three to one on the turret so that's global gold in their hand as well and uh, a lot of wards on the side of Fnatic if you see that scoreboard right there at least two four six there's nine wow. ten wards to be placed with three to be placed oh. on the side of Pacific so the map once their wards go they're gonna be a perfect vision of this map they're gonna be able to set them down all the time Janna again using her oracles to check for wards on Baron everybody's just pretty much trying to soak up XP as they can, but everybody's only on two minions, so they're not getting that much experience from these minions right now. The lanes are actually pretty pushed for them, so they're not able to do much about it. Twisted Fate is on bottom, and hopefully he can get to his team, because the jungle invasion right now from Fnatic is quite hard, and they're just right inside every bush that they can be on Pacific, and you can see Pacific wants to go in their jungle. They just know they cannot. They only have a few wards, one over by right behind Baron, and more and so in their right jungle, guarding blue and guarding that lane towards their uh, second defensive turret so not too much of a ward placement that's really giving them any assistance right now and we do have five members of Fnatic in mid to try and push this turret looks like they will be able to push it after this minion wave right near mid is able to come up past the river and give them some control on this like Corky should be doing a good amount of damage TF on bottom however is going to start rushing through he only has a few minions down there about five two that can take two full hits from a turret so we won't be able to get much damage down here does he have the attack speed he needs and he does have that rage blade so he is going to start stacking attack speed, but it doesn't look like he has enough just yet. His team seems to be calling him back. Malzahar has ported back bottom, and he is forcing TF off of that. Uh, looks like a, the ultimate from TF may bring him back to base. He has the stun, but he does not get the alt down. Malzahar could have stopped TF in his tracks, and it looks like he does get back home in time. TF going up top. And it looks like he will port from that position, just going to a random spot yeah. to get out of that. The mid tower did go down, in fact, and it looks like they may be able to find Tarek here. This is where the word control comes into play. Do they have enough time if Janna can get that right-click attack down and get that slow buff onto him? And he, she does not. And we are going to see that, you know, Pacific is just forced to be in their base right now. Yeah, the Twisted Fight doing what he's supposed to do with the split push, I think that uh, We Will Fail, I could have probably teleported early. They really didn't need him in mid, but they, they did want to have the five people there in case Pacific wanted to go for the team fight. They just wanted, to be, wanted it to be as decisive as possible. So they gave one tower up to Twisted Fate, who is now just basically pushing bot 24-7. He's just doing nothing else. He's building his Lich Bane there, obviously. And the uh, idea behind the Lich Bane is just every time you use a spell, you're going to have more attack damage on your next attack. You see that little red glowy thing? That's the Sheen currently. Oh, and he will get caught here. Yes, that's the slow from Janna. He doesn't have his ultimate up. And that is one dead Twisted Fate right there.
Yeah, that's really not what you need to happen right now. They're not very, they're obviously not up in this game, so they cannot lose those people one and one and one. You're losing experience in lane, you're losing experience from team fights, you're not gaining the gold that you need to be gaining right now. And it's really just overall snowballing into effect that's affecting the entire team instead of just one person. Four members alive now, like I said, forced to stay in their base. That's not where you're going to gain the XP. And it's a quick tower push is coming out of the hands of Fnatic. The global gold still ramping up in their favor. Looks like all of their ultimates are up for the next fight. So they are very confident about this push right here. Not too worried about much. Going back into the jungle. Looks like they will be going for a quick dragon. More gold into their favor. And they're just making sure they're going to get this one handily. They're playing it safe. I appreciate yep. that. I mean, they could go for uh, inhibited tower dives right now. And they could probably still win the game that way. But there's $100,000 on the line here. And you really do want to play it safe. And I think Fnatic are doing the right thing here. We'll see Tarek using his clairvoyance. We're going to head over to Dragon. Now head over to Baron. Direction. See it right there on Baron. And nobody is there. So it looks like TF is going to start heading up that way. And maybe to set down a ward. Does he have one? Yes, he does. And there it is. He's going to set it in the tri bush that goes towards top turret. Looks like Alistar going around to just roam. Do what Alistar does and roam around the map. Uh, Tarek finally with an Oracle's on their team as well, so they're going to be able to go and clear the wards out of the jungle. A few more wards bought by Tarek. He has three, but there's still an amount of ten wards. So wards were placed, and they still have ten wards on Fnatic's side. Ridiculous, that investment that we were talking about before it is absolutely controlling the game. They were able to go for Tarek on that one. Alistar has been able to push Karthus various times in top lane because... Main turrets on the bottom right side and the middle of the map. The one second defensive turret standing in top lane. And it looks like another offensive push to come as Janna heads back towards that area. She finds one ward with inside Baron. She's going to be able to take that out. And within a, a matter of minutes, they may go for Baron after a team fight here. Yeah, like you said, literally every member of Fnatic had a ward in his inventory at one point, And that's just... And now, Shushe with the Soul Stealer is like, yeah, this is when you buy a Soul Stealer. When you're 8.05, that's when you buy a Soul Stealer. <laughs> and he will be able to make it away, not somebody you want to chase as they're ghosting. The damage is going to be done here in base, and this may be the final push for Fnatic as they come out very strong in this game, only having a matter of 8 deaths on their side to 23. A very nice job getting caught up. Can he get the pulverize down? Almost taking him down from full health instantly. Alistar with a final hit, almost killing TF from 100% a, a health. An amazing game by Fnatic, amazing control, and even with the substitute, they were able to come out very strong on top. That was a very dominating performance. I really like to see that. And the AP cow, like I said, it's just always fun to watch. And yes, that was a very, very good performance from Fnatic, considering they're not running their full lineup. We will fail. I didn't do any mistakes that I saw. Maybe he doesn't have as uh, perfect play as XP does, but he did really well for himself. And I'm really glad to see that, that they are actually in fighting shape here, because Epic, I have to say, they looked scary. I'm a little scared. I have to admit, I'm biased. I'm, I'm rooting for Europe here. I'm European. I'm biased here. And I really want to see Europe taking it. But epic, wow, that was a scary performance earlier. And yeah, we see the, the, the scores right now, 11.06. That's how uh, Shushe ended up with a Death Cap, a Lich Bane, and a Soul Stealer. That game was just way beyond over at that point. Yeah, the creep score on uh, Shushe, 238, the <laughs> highest score in the game. You know, uh, Pacific just kind of breaking 150 there on their creep score. Like I said, they were absolutely being pushed back in the match. They weren't able to come out of their lanes. They, you know, right off the bat, still uh, so many wards in the hands of Fnatic right now, able to control the map. Even as the map ended, they had wards, you know. They were ready to continue to fight. They were ready to get another Baron. They were ready to do whatever they needed to do to solidify having zone control over the entire map. They really didn't even focus on the right side of the jungle for Pacific. They were all up on that top side. There was still a turret there, so they were maybe trying to force a fight on that top turret or just force a fight as they went back to Baron. It's something they could have done very easily, and everybody actually played very well for the team.